This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on inauguration of submarine optical fiber connectivity to Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The participants are Ajitain Kumar Jain, cyber expert, and Ruchika Chitravanshi, journalist. Today we have a big news for Andaman and Nicobar Islands. For the first time, the islands are getting optic fiber cable, which means that they're getting access to broadband internet, better landline and telecom connectivity. Jitin Jed, what do you think this will mean for the people of the island and in general for the infrastructure of the country as far as internet connectivity and telecom connectivity goes? I think despite of the strategic importance of Andaman and Nicobar Islands and despite of the tourism potential, for all the last decades we had a lot of discussions about providing better connectivity to Andaman and Nicobar Islands, but it all remained a dream. And the speed of internet, even the 4G connectivity was not available under one because of the same lack of infrastructure. The internet speeds were extremely slow. So any kind of e-commerce, you know, I would say a large-scale e-commerce establishment or BPO services, large-scale tourism potential with them. And these days, online bookings, Google Maps, virtual realities, all things have become essential for tourism. So, mm-hmm. you know, because of lack of connectivity and speed, all these things were absent. And what was more uh, struggling was the lack of opportunities it meant for Andamanese people because they could not have online classes. So I think that long cherished dream that India's commitment to provide better connectivity to all parts across the world, especially North East and Andaman, has come to today. And we are seeing now two cables of 200 Gbps per second line submarine cables will be laid, especially for Andaman. Very rightly you said that it was actually metaphorically also like an island in itself, not connected very well with the mainland, so to speak. Now, how difficult is it to do what has been done now, the laying of submarine optical fiber cables? And why did it take so long for it to happen? It's a 2,300-kilometer long cable which has been laid at the cost of 1,222 crores. And, you know, this is going to connect port players, Swaraj Deep, Little Andaman, Kar Nicobar, Greater Nicobar, Long Island and Rangga. So, you know, it will have a connectivity across Andaman. And now you have a huge opportunity which will give boost to the local economy and delivery of e-governance services, as I said, telemedicine services and tele-education services, which has become extremely critical in the times of pandemic where, you know, institutions are connecting online classes. And apart from that, Andaman does not have rain and road and air connectivity and water connectivity is now also being strengthened by launching ferry services. So this has come at a very opportune time and I think this will give a new boost to the families which are living in Andaman Islands. Yes, big boost, especially in times of coronavirus when you need access to telemedicine and cannot visit hospitals. Besides that, you mentioned e-commerce as well. What is the kind of presence of e-commerce companies right now in this area? There are a couple of websites which are operating, but they deliver very selective and limited items. And delivery frame is very long. Sometimes it is in months and weeks. But there is no local e-commerce vendor in Andaman. So that, I think, it will give boost the local economy. You will see very soon local entrepreneurs in Andaman setting up online shops for Andaman-specific services. You will find educational institutions in Andaman going online, conducting online classes. We have seen the value of telemedicine in the time of pandemic. So now, you know, hospitals and the small uh, medical institutions in Andaman can connect to the rest of India through telemedicine. And then, you know, once you have a high-speed internet, tourism will have a potential increase. And people watch videos. You know, one thing leads to another. We are one of the largest smartphone populations in the world, and one of the most strategic islands did not have an optic fiber connectivity. So I think it is also a national pride which has been delivered to the people of Andaman. Now, there are uh, so many islands in this region, archipelago, and I think 36 of them are inhabited. So does it mean that all of those 36 islands will now be connected via internet, or how many of the islands will be connected? You see, it is a gradual step-by-step project. So initially, we are looking at 10 major islands and you know, obviously Port Blair. So once you have high-speed connectivities in those islands, then the subsidy connectivities could be provided using the radio link or uh, you know telecom towers. So I think within a year or so, you will have, I think, the extensive coverage across Andaman of the high-speed connectivity. What will it mean for tourism and tourists who go there often might want internet even though they may be taking a break from all of that and going to the island now. But as you said, Google Maps, etc., all these things are very integral to travel as well now. What will it mean for tourism? You see, navigation does not take much of data, but it is the downloading of that map which consumes a lot of data. If the basic tourism requirements like essential navigation is not available, 
or you know hmm. high speed booking facilities are not available at times internet is down when you go to different remote islands there is no connectivity sometimes at all so it does hamper tourism because you know these are basic minimum requirements which international tourists or even the domestic tourists expect at the end of the day today so connectivity does promote tourism it does promote people to people connectivity it does promote trade so it will be an ecosystem which will get developed along with tourism which is trade commerce and medical and education and people to people contacts basically also in terms of economy as you said that a lot of local entrepreneurs will come now i understand the islands have been connected to chennai and port blair what does it mean for in general trade activity and that takes through at our ports of india how will it boost that trade activity see right now whatever e-commerce services which were available through bigger portals and most of the items they did not have delivery services or vendors did not have delivery commitments for them mm-hmm. now if somebody was to set up a local e-commerce portal tomorrow they will be able to cater to local demands people will be able to book through local stores people will be able to supply through the local cargo services so it will increase connectivity and tie ups so once that ecosystem develops then a lot of people can set up shops but now, that also requires better road connectivity and sea connectivity that has always been a challenge in andaman so government is increasing the ferry services and you will see better road and sea and air connectivity in andaman and within andaman then there are plans to revive the cargo and ferry services so i think if you look at the strategic location of andaman whatever is possible at that location will be provided and for any sort of project lack of telecom connectivity was always a bottleneck now mm-hmm. i think after this 200 uh, gbps optic fiber cables next we will very soon and see the providence of 4G services within Andaman. So, you are looking at overall development of Andamanese people, trade, commerce, these are all essentials. I mean, you look at us in cities, 50% of our shopping happens online, 50% of our bookings happen online, 70 to 80% of resorts in Andaman were not providing online booking services. They will soon mm. come. And the revenue you had to pay to those international sites, that could be now taken care of by the local entrepreneurs in Andaman. And then yeah. you have a huge opportunity of setting up now BPO services within Andaman. So that is one area which has been explored for Kashmir also, for North East also, and government has been providing subsidy schemes also. That this mm-hmm. is, you know, type of employment which connectivity alone can generate for the people. So you could open BPO services, which is far more easy using the high-speed connectivity. Mm-hmm. So there are opportunities which will be explored over a period of time. You've talked about the strategic importance of these Andamar and Nicobar Islands. How are we placed now with these resources available to us? What is the strategic importance for India? To operate any sort of network-centric operations, to which our defense forces were dependent on the VSAT links or satellite link which was available for the internet connectivity. Now, once you have optic fiber cable, the speed will increase at least 1,000 times. So once you have thousand times, you could go for live connectivities with the other commands. You could go for live interaction. You could go for live integration. Internal networks for C2C operations in the future will now have a boost for different services. And now that we have created this infrastructure, what yeah. should be the next goal for government to utilize this infrastructure at hand now? So first need would be to improve the tourism hub. Now second, if you were to look, I think the next target of the government would be to stop four G services in Andaman Islands, so that you have you know this problem of frequent call drops. That problem is taken care of. Now third, Prime Minister said it is early Independence Day gift for the people of Andaman. There is a huge opportunity which lies in the educational sector because you know the kind of population we have, the tribes we have, the online education will provide a very different window of opportunity for the overall development for the society in Andaman. Because online. classes that have now become the way of uh, schooling mostly yes. that must not be uh, available at all to the students and andaman nicobar at all it was not possible you could not even buffer a proper video so online classes were out of question i think those small little things which remained a distant dream now have been fulfilled and how difficult it is to maintain submarine cable like this because uh, you and i and so many of us who are listening would know that so many times our own broadband in absolutely landlocked areas there are problems How does it work when it is like in a submarine cable? You know, if you have to connect any two continents of the world or different parts of the world where there is a sea in between, uh, you can't have a land-based connectivity. Obviously, the only option is undersea cable, the submarine cable. Now, it does happen that sometimes, like any other wire, submarine cable, in once in two three years, do get some problems. They get cut sometimes, but then restored within few hours after repairing of those cables. So, it is like electricity supply or any other telecom supply. There might be some downtime in the services for a small little while, but then the overall connectivity will now be constant and 24 hours and for the telecom companies what does it mean how will they utilize this now see now this modern infrastructure in andaman could provide a major boost for the blue economy also like fisheries aquaculture seaweed farming see for bpo connectivity you need good person who can be trained in couple of months for on the linguistic skills language skills and any kind of support services you want to provide and mm. apart from the skill imparting to the people the only infrastructure
services which is required is basically a, you know office setup and a high speed internet connectivity which could mm-hmm. offer voip calls and you know voip infrastructure so that thing was lacking in andaman so once you have this high speed connectivity you will see small bpos small customer care centers small outsourcing economies which will come up in the different parts of different islands in andaman so you're saying that the fisheries etc will also get a big boost by this uh, definitely and then you see you india's look is policy andaman is the key player has a key role in, in the entire our india's especially prime minister's look is policy it's about the integration of india the integration of people of andaman with the rest of india and telecom is one big force multiplier force integrated today so mm. i think it will have a far more you know huge role than what we can imagine today and it will be a key force of india's trade and strategic power is in southern asia for thousands of years to come so you see all these uh, big telecom companies now heading there and setting towers exactly. and all of this definitely because once you have this optic fiber connectivity the basic infrastructure for providing other sort of 4g services now available there was a thinking in some parts of government couple of decades ago that we should not build infrastructure along the border that policy has changed now you have got better connectivity and road infrastructure across land borders of india there was a thinking that you know andaman has a strategic importance let that island be there develop at its own pace let not force upon the connectivity let not force upon the it development and other development in those islands but i think that thinking is changing now people realize that these islands have got strategic defense importance they have got importance in the tourism sector of india they are india's gateway to the eastern asia so the government has now decided that full fledged infrastructure of all sectors including telecom and transport would be provided to the residents of those islands and this optic fiber cable is one landmark delivery in that entire bigger vision also are there any risk factors involved strategically speaking of the island having such great connectivity now are there any risk factors that we should be careful no, of i don't think so they may have been one point of time but i know that times have changed these have become the basic essentials for any part of life people thought that building roads will have a risk because if there is a war with china they will find infrastructure and easier to come deep inside india so we didn't build roads but now we think that we need roads so that we can send our own army to the border so that we can defend our borders so it's a way you look at the problem as a way you think that solution might provide relief to the problem or relief to the people or might create another problem in the future so i think the government is now very clear that any sort of connectivity on borders or strategic islands be it road or transport or telecom connectivity is a solution to many problems so it is not a problem in itself so with that vision i think it is now very clear that all these theories of uh, connectivity being a risk i mean they were just you know paper theories they didn't have any strategic value and this government yeah. is right in deciding that to provide a timely high speed connectivity to the island so now that we have over 2000 kilometers of optic fiber cable laid how do you think it can be further enhanced and further expanded you see the submarine cables which form the backbone of global internet uh, one such cable comes from middle east to uh, mumbai and then there is one cable which goes from chennai to singapore so there might be a future a day tomorrow where the net backbone and the submarine cable which goes from chennai to singapore might find a stop over in andaman island so once you have infrastructure on an island there are a lot of possibilities a lot of international investments might come in and it is not only the telecom companies it is the tomorrow private internet companies which might set up a shop in andaman I mean, this is the one government sponsored cable but maybe a decade from now we will find a lot of private players in cable to provide other opportunities in andaman nicobar islands what does it mean for the overall ecology of andaman and nicobar island because obviously now so much industry will concentrate on these islands so many people will now be able to go there does it affect in any way the whole ecology of the islands as well no government has been very careful about the ecology while promoting the tourism development in the andaman islands and even for the lakshadweep so there is always a controlled flow of tourism in andaman there is a very regulated infrastructure so i don't think in the near future we are seeing extremely high inflow of tourism in andaman islands it will always be a regulated flow the latest inauguration of the optical fiber cable by the government has integrated the andaman and nicobar islands to the rest of the country there is an immense scope of opportunity that it has opened up right from tourism to hospitality to e-commerce and also promoting the local entrepreneurs and creating better education opportunities as well for the students thank you so much jitin jain for joining us today thank you you were listening to a discussion on inauguration of submarine optical fiber connectivity to andaman and nicobar islands the participants were jitin kumar jain cyber expert and ruchika chitravanshi journalist This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app News on AIR. This program is also available on our website newsonair.com. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsttalks@gmail.com.